I would just put myself in a coffin, have him lower me into the ground and bury me alive. This podcast is hardly focused. Ah, the French. Someone who's got the same mental acuity as Denny from The Room would be uh, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, uh, uh, currently of the New York Jets, formerly of the Green Bay Packers. So he's a current football player? For some reason, I thought he was like a former and now just like a pundit. He is one of the older players right now in the league because he's 40. Um, okay. But he also tore his Achilles at the beginning of the football season. His first with the Jets because he's he's the quarterback. He was really big on the, on the Packers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of the most, for the game, for the game of American football, most celebrated players. Uh, and then gets traded to the Jets, and then quite literally minutes into the first game that he was playing with the Jets, ruptures his Achilles tendon out for the entire season. Nice. And he used that time to peddle conspiracy theories and misinformation. So that's who Aaron Rodgers is. And rightly so, the late-night circuit makes fun of people like Aaron Rodgers, Jimmy Kimmel being one of them. Yeah. Jimmy Kimmel... Makes fun of him, cracks some jokes. Rogers doesn't appreciate this, so mm-hmm. he decides to respond to being made fun of uh, by a comedian, by a late night host. Which, by the way, if you are a celebrity of uh, any any profile, but especially a high profile celebrity, you're going to be the butt of a, a late night host's jokes. Doesn't matter yeah. what you do, you and they, and they and they mean nothing by it, they, unless you're Donald Trump. They mean no malicious yeah. intent by it. And uh, Rogers didn't take it that way, so mm-hmm. he uh, recently on the Pat McAfee show, which is presented by ESPN, was talking about the uh, list of. Jeffrey Epstein's associates and all the names and all the, the this list. Of, I don't think it's out. I mean, I, I know names are being like mentioned and bits and pieces are being uh, floated around there on the internet, but I, I don't think we have a concrete list that we can reference that we can control F and find names in. Right. It's, it's a lot more complicated than a lot of people on social media want you to think, yeah. but uh, Rogers makes a comment on McAfee's show alluding to Kimmel being on that list. And uh, Kimmel did not respond well to that. His show, I believe it was uh, in the last couple of days of the holiday break before they returned. So Kimmel took it to social media to to call out Aaron Rodgers, he called him an asshole, and mm-hmm. he told him that uh, he is more than willing to debate this in court. Yeah. So now we get to um, last night, or two nights ago, Jimmy Kimmel Live, uh, first show back, and Kimmel wasted no time pulling punches <laughs> uh, against Aaron Rodgers. Seven minutes he spent... Ooh, just eviscerating him. Seven minutes of his monologue just spent just tearing him apart. Nice. Um, so I've cut parts of it. Here is the first part uh, where Kimmel references uh, something that might make you guffaw, Ack. Okay. Here we go. You know, when you hear a guy who won a Super Bowl and did the, all the State Farm commercials say something like this, a lot of people believe it. A lot of delusional people honestly believe I am meeting up with Tom Hanks and Oprah at Shakey's once a week to eat pizza and drink the blood of children. And I know this because I hear from these people often. My wife hears from them. My kids hear from them. My poor mailman hears from these people. And now we're hearing from lots more of them, thanks to Aaron Rodgers, who I guess believes one of two things. Either he actually believes my name was going to be on Epstein's list, which is insane, or the more likely scenario is he doesn't actually believe that. He just said it because he's mad at me for making fun of his top knot and his lies about being vaccinated. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it it seems a bit irrational on Aaron Rodgers' part. Too. Now, I, I do want to say, and... 
you know, the Epstein thing. Sure. Obviously, that's going to be fertile ground for conspiracy theories because it that you know, much like nine eleven, it's an interesting event. It is an event that is undeniably extremely fascinating. A super rich guy ran an island where a bunch of other rich people could come and rape minors, right? Like finding out that rich politicians and entertainers were there would be earth shattering. But I think a lot of people get a little too excited about who might be there because like, from what I understand from, from reading up about it online, the, the, the Epstein Island in question was no longer a thing that existed as of like 1994. Jimmy Kimmel was not a person that would get invited to Epstein Island <laughs> back in 1994. Like, you see, I, I see you, a lot of these names that come up. Like, I, I heard Taylor Swift brought up. It's like Taylor Swift would have been three. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, there, there's this desire for all of the big names to be taken down by the Epstein list to be like the main characters of 2023. Right. Like all of the most interesting people of right now. And that's, I don't think, going to be the case. I think we're going to find out it was a lot of rich business people whose names we've never heard of, many of whom died at age 80, 10 years ago. Right. Like, I, I just don't think it's going to be like Tom Hanks and like all these. Oh, every super interesting current pop culture figurehead like I think that's just kind of wishful thinking on the part of the conspiracy theorists. Was it disproven that Stephen Hawking was on the list or, or visited so, Epstein Island? I don't know about him specifically. I do know that the the list of names that was released isn't like a lot of people think it's just like, oh, here's the list of people who went and had sex with a child. But like what it actually is, is just a 900 page deposition of court files from every dealing involving Epstein. And one example I saw was technically George Lucas's name is in the Epstein files. But the context was asking a witness, did you ever see George Lucas do business with Epstein? To which the witness said, no, I did not. So, it's so like, like it's anybody's that, name. that technically means you're in the Epstein documents, even though that's just you being cleared of wrongdoing. It's, it's so anyone's name could just show up in it and just do it. In yeah, exactly. And unless you're willing to read 900 pages of legal jargon, you're probably not going to be able to discern right away. <laughs> you know, you're, there's not like a big gotcha. I, I think if there was, we would know. <laughs> yeah. I uh, uh, heard this guy uh, is on the list. Do you like hot fudge Sundays? <laughs> well, yeah, that's obvious. Get he it. actually <laughs> ran the Sunday bar on Epstein Island. Yeah, because everybody's name is going to show up on the list, apparently. <laughs> uh, here's uh, more of Jimmy Kimmel tearing apart Aaron Rodgers. This is so the first part that I played was just the warm up. Oh, yeah. It was just 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 getting into it. Uh, here is, uh, as I labeled it, the evisceration. This is how these nuts do it now. You don't like Trump, you're a pedophile. It's their go-to move. And it shows you how much they actually care about pedophilia. But here's the thing. I spent years doing sports. I've seen guys like him before. Aaron Rodgers has a very high opinion of himself. Because he had success on the football field, he believes himself to be an extraordinary being. He genuinely thinks that because God gave him the ability to throw a ball, he's smarter than everyone else. The idea that his brain is just average is unfathomable to him. We learned during COVID, somehow he knows more about science than scientists. A guy who went to community college, then got into Cal on a football scholarship and didn't graduate, someone who never spent a minute studying the human body is an expert in the field of immunology. He just put on a, he put on a magic helmet and he, that G made him a genius. It's, Aaron got two A's on his report card. They were both in the word Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was good. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> just if I if if I were Aaron Rodgers, and, and thank God I'm not. <laughs> 
But if I were Aaron Rodgers, I would just not say anything. I would just hang my head, cut my losses, and move on. There's yep. no going back from that. I would tweet, well, when you're right, you're right, and then delete my account. <laughs> I would just put myself in a coffin, have him lower me into the ground and bury me alive. <laughs> well, back to jail for me. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I do think Kimmel made an astute point. And I think, um, you know, that's something that we do see a lot. And, and I, I, I think we do tend to see it more in, you know, white men of a certain age <laughs> kind of have that, uh, attitude but there's this uh opinion that yeah i'm really smart in my one specific field ergo i'm really smart at everything and if i decide i want to just like pick up a new intellectual pursuit as a hobby i'm instantly a genius and all of my opinions on that matter are worth taking into consideration above and beyond anyone else's and i just think that that we as individuals need to be more open to the fact that that just might not be true. Well, that leads right into the next set of comments from Kimmel, where he talks about the Dunning-Kruger effect. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to that. I looked it up. This is actually a thing. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias in which people with limited competence in a particular domain overestimate their abilities. In other words, Aaron Rodgers is too arrogant to know how ignorant he is. <laughs> they let him host Jeopardy for two weeks. Now he knows everything. And by the way, I'm not one of those people who thinks athletes and members of the sports media should stick to talking about sports. I think Aaron Rodgers has the right to express any opinion he wants to, but saying Someone is a pedophile is not an opinion, nor is it trash talk. Sorry, Pat McAfee. And as far as the, well, you say things about people all the time argument goes, yes, I do. It's not the same. It's not even close to the same. We say a lot of things on this show. We don't make up lies. In fact, we have a team of people who work very hard to sift through facts and reputable sources before I make a joke. And that's an important distinction, a joke about someone, even when that someone is Donald Trump, even a person <laughs> who lies from the minute he wakes up until the minute he's smearing orange makeup on his my pillow at night. <laughs> even he deserves that consideration. And we give it to him because the truth still matters. And when I do get something wrong, which happens on rare occasions. You know what I do? I apologize for it, which is what Aaron Rodgers should do, which is what a decent person would do, but I bet he won't. If he does, you know what I'll do? I'll accept his apology and move on, but he probably won't do that. My guess is he won't apologize. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, the Dunning-Kruger effect, I only mm -hmm. learned about in the past year because of Reddit. Okay. And... <laughs> uh, Boy, I, I'm not going to do it here because um, I, I don't like being sued, but I can name some people for you that I know personally oh, who yeah. suffer from this. Uh, it is it is a it is a real thing. Yeah, um, I think I'm probably is as, as, as someone who enjoys uh, podcasting and enjoys the the business of radio i probably suffer from it but yeah i mean i don't think it's one of those things that like oh you're a, you're a dumb asshole fuck you if you have this like i think it's a a real thing like a real phenomenon that anyone can fall into and it's more about you know monitoring yourself and being aware oh, wait a minute, is the person who actually has like way more educational and lived experience in this field saying something different than me, a random guy who just found the topic interesting and watched two YouTube videos? You know, like that's worth keeping in mind. <laughs> right. Um, I, it, it's knowing what your uh, limitations are. Yeah, right? exactly. Kimmel's right. You, you, you don't respond to a playful ribbing by throwing acid on the person. Yeah. And, and, you know, he did bring up a good point, too, about like this really shows how much the the right wing actually cares about children is, it, you know, it is fascinating. And I know it's a it's a tense and very uh, difficult subject to talk about, but. It, it does seem like they kind of just turn the whole pedophilia and child abuse and, you know, child slavery rings into just kind of like a pop, like almost like a Mission Impossible kind of like with their 
when they what was that movie they made recently where it was like the true story of uh, a guy who like under went and you know infiltrated some child sex rings do, uh, do you know what i'm talking about the terminator <laughs> but like and then it turned out the whole movie was just like a uh, wildly irresponsible like they put a bunch of actual activists and officers like lives in risk with this movie and like made the whole situation just like infinitely worse um the sound of freedom the sound of freedom is it yes okay. thank you um it's like they've turned it into this sort of like well i'm on the right side because i care about stopping pedophiles but then their version of quote stopping pedophiles is like they think that you just go outside and like shoot the big monster with the, wearing a t-shirt that says pedophile and then you don't actually have to do any work to like actually find out and like fix systemic problems <laughs> oh jesus this movie has jim caviezel in it uh he was jesus christ in no. uh, in passion of the christ but he's also like he's got some old he's got some crazy beliefs of his own yeah the whole if you're not familiar with it the whole thing turned out like i'm pretty sure multiple people involved with it were like immediately after the movie dropped were like found guilty of sexual assault to themselves <laughs> and just all like it, it defies belief like it's 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 full you can't make this stuff up territory i also want to mention that google is just fucking with me now because earlier when we were talking about names of people who have shown up on on epstein's list mm-hmm. you type like at least for me you type any celebrity's name into google it hits space in the like the autocomplete it says epstein <laughs> Or Epstein oh, yeah. list. So then, based on your description of Sound of Freedom, I, I type in movie about a guy who infiltrates, and the first result that came up was Epstein Island. <laughs> yeah, it thinks we're just on a uh, on a roll there. <laughs> just people like it's it's all people are talking about. So it's yeah. just it's it's <laughs> Google just assuming that everybody's searching for it. <laughs> yeah, how, like how many cups of sugar do I need to bake Jeffrey Epstein's Island? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, here's the last clip from uh, Kimmel's monologue. Um, it kind of goes back to what you were talking about. Uh, the right. Uh, it's a message to conservatives as we head into uh, election season. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, it's an election year. Yep. 2024. Here we go. The reason I even bring this up is because I hope the many, many decent people out there who vote conservative or whatever you want to call what goes on now. I don't see anything conservative about any of it, but... To those of you who are part of that, I want to say this, and I hope you'll, you'll listen and give it a little bit of consideration. If you are a member of a group that think it's okay to randomly call someone a child molester because you don't like what that person has to say, maybe you should rethink being a part of that group. Yeah. And, and I also want to say congratulations to Aaron Rodgers, who has done the impossible. He made the New York Jets look even worse. <laughs> It's a football joke, hack. Oh, uh, okay. I thought he was talking about airplanes. Nope. You know, they've been having a lot of trouble with their doors recently. <laughs> that's right. It took me a second. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a that's a whole other can of worms. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Uh I'd hate to be anybody flying right now. Yeah. I mean, between the doors exploding off, all the not real motherfuckers, it is not a good time to be in the air. I would rather I would rather have that happen. I'd rather just see a good old fashioned (laughs) meltdown on an airplane than have the door blow out and and suck the shirt off of me. That motherfucker back there is not real. Yeah. Uh, Oh, the Jets uh, finished third in the AFC East. I mean, that's not like. Well, let's put it this way. It's better than the Patriots. The Patriots finished last. You remember the Patriots at one point, at one point in the tw- in the past 20 years, did okay as a football team? I don't know. They did. Uh, Is this pre or post deflate gate? Uh, I mean, even post deflate gate. We had Tom Brady for a few more years after that, and then he left, and then all of a sudden, uh, things just went downhill. Act literally, I mean, I know you're not a... Uh, uh, well, it goes completely against how we open the show. I know you're not the biggest football guy, uh, but mm-hmm. New England Patriots this is the worst season that they've had. Cool, like in 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 
over 20 years. So uh, the Jets are somehow better than them, uh, and that's without their star quarterback. Because remember, he tore his Achilles. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers made this claim on the Pat McAfee show uh, presented by ESPN. And he goes back on the Pat McAfee show because he uh, makes regular appearances on McAfee's show and uh, was back on the show to now respond and defend himself uh, to and against Jimmy Kim. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, so I'll mention it now. I am of the mind that Aaron Rodgers is suffering from CTE. Oh, yeah. And CTE, not really a thing that you know people really talked about, didn't really know about until I think the Aaron Hernandez uh, thing happened. Why are all the right. sh- why are all the shitlord football players named Aaron? A good question. Uh, I mean, I don't, we, we, we don't... have to just have a complete shutdown of football players named Aaron until we figure out what's going on. <laughs> if only we could actually like take out their brains and not kill them in the process, you know? Boy, that'd be something, huh? Because that's the problem. Like to, to study CTE, you need to have a, a an intact brain. Yeah. And and also one that's uh, not decomposed. Like there's like a, a period of time. You only have so much time to work with before the brain becomes useless for any sort of testing. All, all brain conditions are deeply fascinating to me. Like these cases of like a normal guy will get like an extreme headache. And then in two weeks that does a mass shooting or something like just weird brain stuff just freaks me out to think about. Yeah. I mean, it's like early onset dementia. I mean, the ones who, yeah. who are constantly taking hits to the head, Mm-hmm. In sporting events, it is. Yeah, I mean, d- you'd, you'd assume something bad's going to happen to you. Yeah, and it and it as you get older, it starts to really show the the effects really start to kick in. Um, and people just, I mean, they just go nuts. They kill people, or they kill themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and leading up to that, they just start. Uh, uh, running their mouths off, uh, having about, really bizarre opinions about, uh, you know, organized medicine. Sure. So I kind of purposely did this with Aaron Rodgers because I had to force myself to listen to 10 minutes or, or however long it was of him talking to McAfee about this. So mm-hmm. whereas with Kimmel, when I labeled these sound drops, at least I had an idea of what it was Kimmel was going to be talking about. And then with Rogers, the first one I labeled mindless blather. <laughs> so uh, allow me to disclaim that uh, the Ack and Jack show hardly focused and solid listen do not condone any of uh, what uh, Aaron Rodgers is about to say whatever that might be <laughs> yes and yes I am speaking for the network when I say this uh, but uh, here we go here's uh, the first part of that happy birthday we're so sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay here we go the history of this whatever this is between jimmy and i this goes back to COVID times right and in COVID times he mentioned on his show uh jokes about my uh immunization which i know you you also made a little joke about it um you know i'm not gonna get into that whole thing that's i've talked many times about that but I made a joke about that uh you know uh and the fact that you know my own research he didn't just stop there though you know, he he made a lot of other comments about uh, unvaccinated people, uh, mentioning that they don't deserve treatment. Uh, if they're at a hospital, uh, they shouldn't be given a hospital bed. Uh, he made comments about uh, repurposed drugs that were being used all over the world that have incredible safety profiles um, that, uh, that were derogatory. Uh, he... Uh, you know, mentioned uh, ivermectin being horse based and pushed that whole narrative for a long time. He gave a platform to one of the biggest uh, spreaders of misinformation during the COVID times, Dr. Fauci. Um, so, in my opinion, Jeez. you know, he ripped me about he ripped me about the vax, and and that turns out to be an L on on many occasions because the vax was not safe and effective, like we were told that it was in the beginning. Uh, there are a lot of injuries now that we've seen related to the vaccine. So in my opinion, you went after me. That's fine. You're a comedian. Go for it. Not offended. But that, that was an L. 
Keep yapping, keep yapping and flapping. Oh, an L. That was an L, bro. That was an L. He's just mad that Kimmel tore into him like an Achilles tendon on minute two of the season. (laughs) Damn, Ash just made a sports (laughs) reference and a joke. (laughs) I had to workshop that one in my head for about five minutes before before dropping it. But fuck, it made sense. I'm proud of you, dude. <laughs> Shit, we got to mark that for the archives. Mm. January uh, 10th, 2024. <laughs> that was impressive. That's better than anything I could do. <laughs> uh, now, right, that's just the, that's just the lead up. That's just him trying to justify why he made the comments that he made. But now you you called me a moron in my defense. You called me a moron for the incredibly stupid opinions that I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> you called me a moron in response to that. I say, duh, <laughs> duh. Um, yeah, I, I, I fear what happens whenever I play audio of other people spouting all that crap like in terms of like content suppression and what have you i'll tell you this none of this is going up on youtube oh yeah youtube youtube just i mean that's a good point yeah oh wait what what if i do this what if i i just happen to have this sitting in the studio and i hold it up to the camera uh disinfectant wipes from (laughs) from from aldi kills the virus uh that causes covid19 the next aaron Rodgers clip i have is labeled i'm not stupid Uh, let's let's listen to him justify that one. Here we go. I'm not stupid enough, even though you think I'm an idiot, and you made a lot of comments about my intelligence. But I'm not stupid enough to accuse you of that with absolutely zero evidence, uh, concrete evidence. It, that's ridiculous. So I'm glad, and I think we can agree on something: is that uh, one, those crimes are heinous, and two, I'm, I'm glad you're not a list because those. Those who are on the list, and this is what I think we can agree on, that at minimum, there should be an inquiry into uh, their involvement, especially if they went to the island. And at maximum, there should be um, an investigation into it. So I hope that you'll give the same type of energy to these heinous crimes when they do come out and the names do come out and, and there is an inquiry into it that you gave to... Uh, other subjects that I actually mentioned uh, that you spent a lot of time working on. Uh, but again, Ak, you said it earlier. Uh, just the names will show up in the the documents, mm-hmm. but not necessarily because they're being accused of anything. Right, and, and you know, again, like it, it just all feels so fake to me. I, it's hard for me to articulate without sounding like a bad person, but I just I don't believe them when 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 very deeply conservative individuals are like the most terrible, heinous, evil crimes imaginable. You know, I, I, I hope they're brought to justice. And it's like, I just don't believe you. I think you think that it's liberals. It's a it's a new world order thing of liberals and Democrats and Hollywood elites who you hate for other reasons. And I think it would bring you joy to see them branded as pedophiles. That's what I think it all comes down to. I don't think there's a sincere desire to help victims or save children. It's like vindication. But like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think. That, that's all I hear there when he's saying, I think you'll agree that uh, we need an investigation. He's not thinking of like random billionaire uh, who no one's ever heard of who successfully manages to skirt the law because billionaires are able to do that in our society. He's hoping that some lib who made fun of him will get busted and then he can go, ah, I knew it. It's going to be libs all drinking babies and, <laughs> you know, it, wor- worshiping Satan. It's going to be so funny with a capital U. So funny when Aaron Rodgers' name shows up in that <laughs> list, in those documents, and Kimmel's is nowhere to be found. Oh, boy. You want you, 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 uh, you want to you want to play with fire? I can do that, too. Um, <laughs> and uh, act. Don't worry about you worry about like. Sound like a terrible person. In the case of Aaron Rodgers, have at it. 
Yeah. He, he, he kind of deserves it at this point. I'm getting a lot of questions about my I'm not an idiot t-shirt that are already answered by the shirt. <laughs> uh, usually, too, in my experience, the, the people who um, are very adamant that they're they're not stupid. And for, for, you know, for all, you know, Hey, maybe they could like be, be very book smart, you know, mm-hmm. but the people are like, Oh, I'm not stupid, even though you think I am. And then they proceed to exclaim or do something incredibly idiotic. Yeah. There are different kinds of intelligence, right? I don't doubt for a second that there are areas in which Aaron Rodgers possesses genuine knowledge and insight. I just, I agree with Kimmel's take that people who, have decided they're really smart in one area often then decide they must be smart in every area. So, Oh yeah, I'm really good at this one particular thing. Therefore, if I decide COVID is fake, I must be right because I'm really good at this other thing that's unrelated to, you know, molecular biology. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Here's more of Aaron Rodgers. I labeled this clip more drivel. (laughs) It's almost two minutes long, so saddle up again. And this dude, like Kimmel, spent seven minutes tearing Rogers apart, and then Rogers spent like double that time, Mm -hmm. just just rambling, yeah, and not really like he never. uh, Spoilers: He doesn't ever apologize to Kimmel. He he hasn't apologized to Kimmel. Fourteen minutes of just uh, rambling about basically him justifying why he said what he said and then also st- justifying and solidifying his beliefs and his yeah. his misinformation that he peddles here we go this is the game plan of the media and this is what they do they try and cancel you know it's, and it's not just me it's it's nowhere near just me i mean if you look at all the different people who've been uh, censored from the internet during especially during covid um the canceling that went on the censorship using the government to try and censor people that happened. Um, and if that doesn't work, then they go to name calling. I mentioned a lot of the, the names that I've been called and they don't stick because I'm not anti-vax. I'm interested in uh, informed consent and things that are in the best interest of my body. Uh, I'm not a MAGA. <laughs> I've never had any affiliation with anybody associated with that movement. Right. Which is okay if you are though. Like there's different opinions all over the place. Right. If you're, if you're, that's your ideology, that's fine. I'm not a super political person, okay? Do whatever you want. Uh, conspiracy theorists, that's fine. Because if you look at the track record of conspiracy theorists in the last few years, they've been right about a lot of things. So I don't care about that one. Anti-Semite, that was called, I mean, that, that's just like, this is their game plan. They use these words to cancel people. And they went and ran with this because it's the crazy anti-vaxxer wacko again talking about, you know, accusing somebody of being a pedophile. Like, of course, this is the game plan that they use. Incorrect. But um, that's the, that's the, the environment that we're in. You know, we're there's uh, a lot of people who have been captured by various, you know, entities, government entities, whether we're talking about pharmaceutical industrial complex or whether we're just talking about believing that the government has a better interest in mind and we're puppeting, um, you know, various narratives. In the end, if you are not someone whose opinion aligns with the mainstream narrative, this is what they're going to do with you. And it's, it's not me. I'm not a victim. I don't give a shit. People like him, people like Rogers, uh, two words that they love to throw out together all the time. Mainstream media. Mm hmm. Also, not political. This is the exact same shit that Elon Musk has been pulling for the last couple of years. Is he does nothing all day, every day, but retweet and signal boost the most insane far right reactionary conservative MAGA opinions and accounts on Twitter. And then whenever he's pressed on it, he goes, I'm not political. I'm a centrist. I'm I'm a moderate. It's like Bro, you're welcome to think that about yourself, but anyone who's ever read two sentences you've put together knows that's fucking bullshit. I'm if s- you tell me, oh, I'm not MAGA, I'm not very political, I just happen to believe laundry list of every grievance that MAGA people have, that's that's MAGA. I don't care what you call yourself. You've just outlined why you are in that movement. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm a centrist. 
Uh, I, I, I'm neither here nor there, but uh, let me tell you why we need to get rid of all the migrants. Yeah, exactly. I labeled these purposely uh, because I was subjecting myself to torture. So this one is labeled fucking imbecile. Here we go. I'm glad that, that Jimmy uh, is not on the list. I really am. And, and uh, I don't think uh, he's the P word. Um, and you know, I think it's impressive that a man who went to uh, Arizona State and has 10 uh, joke writers can read off a prompter. So, you know, my education at JUCO and my three semesters at Cal that I'm very proud of uh, has worked out for me, and I'm glad to see it's worked out for him as well. So I wish him the best. Again, I, I don't give a shit what he says about me. Um, but as long as he understands what I actually said, and uh, that I'm not accusing him of uh, being uh, being on a list, then I'm all for moving forward. Boy, I love it when people just oh. slam the table while they're speaking. It's I was thinking the exact same thing. Annoying in the least. It's such a it's a nervous thing too. He knows. He's like, ah, oh, you know, I, I've done nothing wrong. Here's my extremely obvious nervous tick. <laughs> but yeah, I was going to ask you because I can't see the video, but I could hear the audio. I was like, is he just like nervously tapping his desk the entire time? He's someone, talking? someone is doing, I'll tell you in the video, someone is doing it, but like just the, the way they have his window cropped, you, you can really only see his head. Okay. And I'm, go I'm assuming it's Rogers as he's yeah. trying to make a point doing that. But because he is a fucking moron, doesn't realize that that's picking up on his microphone, whatever instrument he's using, and that it's going out. Oh, that That's just as worse as, uh, it is as bad as calling uh, Jimmy Kimmel a pedophile. We're just yeah. blindly accusing people of being a pedophile. Oh, <laughs> That that's what that and then see that's what irks me. So anyway, um, so I, as I as I've been uh, sort of teasing here, there's a bit of a follow up to this. You want to talk about vindication? Uh, according to <laughs> CNN, Aaron Rodgers is off ESPN's Pat McAfee show for the season after ugly remarks about Jimmy Kimmel and conspiracy theories. Yeah. Now they say for the season, and uh, you know the football season is is coming to a close for for the New England Patriots. It's over. Um, because mm -hmm. now we are in, uh, now we're going to be deciding the, getting to the point to deciding who's going to be playing in the Super Bowl. So there's a few weeks left, but, um, I guess historically Rogers would appear on McAfee's show, uh, through March. Mm -hmm. I would assume just a, you know, postseason discussion, but, um, he is, he is at least for the rest of this season, no longer appearing and hopefully it's a permanent decision. They've been canceled for my beliefs. McAfee told his audience today. So Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays season four is done. There could be a lot of people that are happy with that. Myself included, to be honest with you, the way it ended, it got real loud. Uh, is that Pat? A that, quote from him? Yeah, that's that's him. okay. Uh, article says a person familiar with the matter told CNN that the decision to end Rogers regular Tuesday appearances was due to his recent behavior and not the conclusion of the regular NFL season. Yeah, no shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Rogers. And I didn't, I, I'll, I'll preface this by saying there was a clip that I wanted to include um, where, where Rogers is talking about this individual but at the time, I didn't know who it was he was referring to. So I just mm -hmm. felt like without knowing that context, it wouldn't have made sense to include it. But uh, this this blurb here summarizes it. Uh, Rogers responded to Kimmel during his regular appearance on McAfee's show on Tuesday, declining to apologize for his comments and instead choosing to deliver a conspiratorial monologue in which he spread med medical misinformation, assailed the news media, and even attacked an ESPN executive by name. Now the, article, the article didn't mention how it was, but he uh, Rogers kept referring to uh, someone named Mike Foss. All right. And I didn't know who that was. Turns out that was someone who works for ESPN. So, yeah, that's a good idea. Why don't you do that? Why don't you start going after people who who are uh, paying you to appear on ESPN and, mm -hmm. and, and in seemingly not caring that you're using it as a platform to be just a complete scourge on this earth? Uh, by the way, uh, 
he, he is paid. And this is not, this is not a joke. He is paid seven figures. So over a million dollars to appear on the Pat McAfee show. Oh my God. I don't, I don't know if that's like a contract. It certainly can't be, you know, per appearance. That would be, that would be insane, but he's, yeah. he's got a, a sizable contract to, uh, appear on a sports talk show to talk about anything but yeah all right yeah i i yeah fuck him uh rod <laughs> according to the article <laughs> rogers repeated promotion of dangerous anti-vaccine uh, rhetoric prompted questions as to whether bob Iger, the disney chief executive went intervene because espn is owned by disney uh, mm-hmm. reputable media organizations do not allow guests to deliver extended remarks, spreading medical misinformation unchecked. So why was he allowed to get away with it for so long? Did yeah, he- exactly. Like it shouldn't take someone complaining about it like Kimmel for this to, uh, have, have action taken against it. Right. And it probably also, uh, I mean, I, I wish it didn't take a week for ESPN to, to realize this and make this decision. But if we're all under the Disney umbrella, that includes Jimmy Kimmel because he's on ABC and that's long been a Disney property. So now you're you're, you're going after people within the the organization that's paying you to do this. The dude's got CTE. He has to have CTE. There's nobody. Nobody is this stupid uh, without some sort of like severe mental illness. Unfortunately, I don't know if I agree with you there. <laughs> I think lots of people are that stupid okay. for a whole host of reasons. Okay. There's going to be Roger supporters out there. That's the worst part. There's always going to be people out there who will uh, cling to every word that he says. It's like when we were mm-hmm. talking about Kurt Schilling a few months ago yeah. and people clinging to Schilling despite being uh, just as bad as Aaron Rodgers, in my opinion. Yeah, um, but yeah, and that's what sucks. You know, these are influential people. If they if they decide to spread misinformation, people believe it, and then you know, people can get hurt, people can die. He, you know, every, every big name celebrity like Joe Rogan. You know, if if you go if you have a following, and you spread medical information about COVID, you have blood on your hands. People yeah. have died because they believe you when you say things and you aren't careful about what you choose to say. I would say this had a happy ending. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I de- agree to some degree. And then we, um, we for, for at least the rest of the season don't have to get any more sound bites titled. I want to die dot J dot MP4. I'm sure there will be other. Uh, mm. I'm sure we'll have other reasons for that. It, it, at least not from Aaron Rodgers. Aaron got two A's on his report card. They were both in the word Aaron. <laughs> That's a <laughs> solid joke. I don't know which of his 10 writers came up with it, but I like it. Part of me thinks that uh, Kimmel, like that was just off the cuff. That was all him. <laughs> that was seven minutes where he was just like, I'm doing this one. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that his writers might have contributed here and there, but that was that had to have largely been Kimmel just, just doing yeah. it. I way. mean, it was personal. That was a personal rant. Yeah. Um, and he had every right to take it personally.